All right, hello everybody. My name is Dalton Rellinger, and welcome to what might be the final episode of uh, this Let's Play of Sailwind. Uh, we are going to be heading towards Kronos. Uh, whether or not I finish this journey in this video or not will remain to be seen. I am starting this video quite late, uh, but it is Saturday, and I can pretty much stay up as late as I choose, or as late as my body allows me. Uh, so... I've already taken the liberty of uh, stocking the ship full of food and other supplies, and I think we're ready to be on our way. So, let's go ahead and get this thing lined up. Go ahead and lower down the front gaff. I believe the plan was to sail straight south to latitude, what was it, 38, 28? It would be 28, wouldn't it? Or would it? I'm, I'm a little rusty. Okay, yeah, so... Latitude 38, 22 east. So we want to try and get to latitude 38 uh, sooner rather than later. This is kind of an interesting issue. The wind is going to be blowing like directly from the south, so I'm going to have to go... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sail around the outside of Sunspire over there and kind of just very, very gently head in a southerly direction. I think that would make the most sense, but this is me we're talking about, so sensical might not be uh, the most obvious thing. So uh, once we get done with this particular series, uh, as I've said in the past, we will be looking into other games, and we will also be, be doing a uh, playthrough of the random maps. Or the game randomizer, I believe, is what it's called. I'm just going to go ahead and release this thing entirely. It can do whatever the heck it wants to do. See, I don't want to point too far to the south, but I do want to be kind of heading vaguely to the south. I think about there-ish should do. And there are a few things that I never really got around to getting, such as the, uh, uh, the big bottles that you can get from... It wouldn't be Neverden, I don't think. It would be... Um, What's the island to the north of Neverden? There we go. All Nylum. Yeah, you can get like big bottles that hold 10 drinks of water or rum or whatever you have in mind for that bottle instead of five. I never got around to buying those, but oh well. We can get around to it in the, uh, in the next series, I suppose. And Derail Valley had its update today, which I'm kind of stoked for. I've got two... Actually, I need to check that out. I'll probably check this off screen, but I, th I think I've got two extra vacation days that I can use just whenever I so choose. I typically try and 
hold on to them for emergencies and stuff, but I've got basically seven days of vacation, eight days if I count my uh, floating holiday. Uh, so at some point or another, I'll probably just take a day off and just start recording a lot of stuff uh, all at once. Or so long as my attention span can uh, handle anyway. Because here's here's kind of an interesting thing that's happened. I'm going to move the microphone a bit closer to me. Um, I don't know how true it is, but I remember seeing a post that YouTube has lowered its uh, standards to be able to get advertisements and stuff on your videos. Uh, it was at 1,000 subscribers. Now it's down to 500. Um, and I'm more than halfway there, so I'm figuring, you know what, why the heck not start focusing a bit more on the YouTube channel? Um, I don't want to be one of those YouTubers that has, you know, ads like every 30 seconds. I'm thinking maybe an ad at the very beginning, in the very middle, if it's a longer video than one at the end. Um, it all depends on the length of the video. If it's an hour-long video, I see no problem in having an ad that's, like, right in the middle at, at the 30-minute mark. That way, it just gives you a chance to go to the bathroom or whatever, but... <clears throat> um, it's just kind of something to look forward to, I suppose, because I, I never really saw this channel getting to a 1,000 subscribers. Uh, but, I mean, it might be possible... I started playing the Isle again recently, and it, it's a really... I'm, I'm struggling to find the words here. Like, it, it still has a lot of problems, but maybe I'll start putting that on the channel again in the, in the somewhat relatively near future. Who knows? It all depends on how the videos do. Uh, right now, Sailwind is pretty much what my channel's known for, so... Might as well uh, take advantage of that fact, I suppose. Uh, Elden Ring might be another potential that we see on the channel as well, because I just bought that today when it was on sale. I got it for $40 or so. But, uh, yeah. I think... There's not really much going on right now, so, although, I know a lot of you guys like to watch the sailing bits, so I'll just kind of record. Might not say much, but I'll let you guys enjoy the sailing for at least a little while. You know what, I'll just leave the camera running until we get past, uh... I just said the island's name not that long ago. Spire something. Uh, where are you? That's the Dragon Cliffs. There you are, Sun Spire, yeah. I do like how illuminated the ship is at night. It is a very pretty sight, it has to be said. But wait. We have the wind at our backs now. Hello. At least I... Eh, kind of at our backs. Go. 
Uh, it's such a it's such a majestic sight. <laughs> it really is. I I love these old sailboats. They're really really cool. Would have been terrifying to work on back in the day, though. Would have actually absolutely been like. I suppose if you wanted to see the world, there would have been worse jobs. But the conditions that you had to live in on board these things back in the day, they weren't great. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning. Ah, good morning, everybody. Uh, we have passed Sunspire by the looks of it. Uh, how are we doing for wind? Eh, still doing vaguely fine. Come nighttime, I'm going to check our latitude and make sure we're heading in a okay-ish direction. Uh, the compass is right here. So yeah, we are heading a bit further to the south now, which is good. Um, I think what I might do... You know, the problem is the wind. I'm going to go ahead and turn us a bit further to the southeast. about there-ish should be fine. Okay, so, uh, what do we have for breakfast? We have cheese, cheese, more cheese, and would you believe more cheese? And over here we have pork, 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 <laughs> and then a lot of water. And I didn't turn on this lantern. <clears throat> um, honestly, food is kind of fine for right now, so let's just go ahead and... I don't want to drink rum because this is the last video of this series, pro provided that we, you know, make it to our destination in this video. We may or may not. So I want it to show as much as possible. I would rather it not show me capsizing over, though. I think I can get away with just moving these just a little bit further. About there I should do. About there-ish as well. Yeah, that's actually just completely loose, so... That might just be what I decide to do, is I'm just going to let these things fly loose. I will keep some restraint on the rear one, though, because that thing likes to turn us quite a lot. So what are we transporting again? I think it was gold or something, wasn't it? No, it's it's seafood of all things. It's <laughs> it's it's seafood that we're taking to Kronos. <laughs> uh, that's that's actually kind of funny. 
And it's it's such a tiny load too. <laughs> Oh well. I guess we could gauge our speed. It'll give us something to do. How fast are we going? Um, eh, give or take eight knots, looks like. Could definitely be going faster, but the wind isn't exactly in our favor right now, so... Oh well. Of course, maybe I could... bring these things out again. Call that good right there. All that good. And yeah, there we go. That should help us catch a bit more wind. So I want the sun to be directly south. I need to give it just a little bit more time. Okay, I'm going to say that's probably close enough. Uh, let's pull this thing out because we hardly ever get to use it. I guess it's still not quite far enough. By the looks of it, we're probably going to be at 39 latitude. It's a very easy way we can f figure that out. Okay, Mount Malefic is at 39. So I'm going to need to go a ways further out. Oh, hello. Let's let's not have that. That's mildly disturbing. You know what? That'll work right there. That's more or less directly south. Okay, we're either going to be in the very tip top of 39 or we're still going to be in 40 somewhere. It looks like... Probably still in the 40 area. Yeah, definitely still in the 40s. Okay, well, uh, they are still heading to the southeast, right? Yeah, well, we're slowly going to the south. Slowly. Eventually, sooner or later, we should cross over to uh, latitude 38. Let's 
go ahead and eat something. suppose what I could do is I could just stay to heck with it and just start sailing like aggressively to the to the southeast. And the sun sets on Aestrin for the last time in this Let's Play. Here goes Sunspire just disappearing into the horizon, and Mount Malefic will be joining it in the not-too-distant future. Gonna be the last time you see it for this play for this playthrough. <sighs> Very pretty from this angle. This is a pretty easy journey so far, though. It has to be said. You just kind of point the ship in the right direction and off you go. <laughs> of course, we are heading into a part of the map that didn't exist until somewhat recently. So we're heading for Latitude 22, or not Latitude 22, but Longitude 22. And yeah, this is going to be... I don't think this is going to be just a... single video, guys. I think it's going to be a series by itself. Because this thing only goes to longitude 6. And just going from Dragon Cliffs to Gold Rock City, which is pretty much as straight a shot as it gets, takes like 6 hours. See, so yeah, this would probably be like a full 24 hour journey. Well, it looks like the wind is kind of shifting in our favor a little bit. So there is that. <laughs> I like how the sun just disappears whenever you pull out your telescope. <laughs> All right, once the sun goes down and we can finally see the North Star, I'm going to figure out where the heck we are in terms of uh, latitude. Yeah, 38 north, 22 east. I surely brought enough supplies for this, right? Like, food I've got basically unlimited of. It's water I'm kind of concerned about, because even if I run out of my uh, crated foods, I've still got fish that I can fish up. Water I've only, got, I've only got a finite supply of, though, so... There is a sense of mystery to this, though. A sense of danger. That back in the day, before the world was explored and sailors were going off to far off distant lands with nothing but ocean in between them, imagine there is a fear of, like, leviathans and such creatures of the deep sea. I do kind of wish this game had that fear, because otherwise it's just kind of... I mean, yeah, we've got storms, but 
but how many of those things have I sailed into for this playthrough? Probably more than plenty. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, figure out where the heck the North Star is. Yeah, we are still at 40, but give it time. We've got all the time in the world to... Uh, Oh, that's the wrong thing. You've got all the time in the world to make it to latitude 38. And it should be worth saying that I don't really know much about this uh, Kronos place. I've seen like a couple of screenshots of it, but that's about it. Catch as much wind as we possibly can. snack and get ready for bed. I'll see you guys in the morning. And the sun rises on us once again. You can just, just about make out Mount Malefic back out there. Um, be easier if it wasn't for the waves, but uh, the wind has shifted in direction uh, we are now heading, more or less, like, straight south. Um, I figured it'd be a good, a, as good a time as any to just head for latitude 38, then just head straight east from there. It is east, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, not really much else to report, other than the wind is kind of, it's kind of trying to blow me back towards the Dragon Cliffs at the moment. It's just so cool to see a landmass just way out there. That kind of calls for a screenshot, I'm going to be honest. So does that. <laughs> uh, just absolutely magnificent ships. I think there is still one ship like this that sails the, uh, 
like from the English Channel up to, is it the Baltic Sea? Like with, uh, like up in Scandinavia? I don't remember if that's the Baltic or if that's something else. But it, I think it's a Swedish ship that sails from Sweden down to England, docks in London for a while, then it sails back up to Sweden. And it's a ship kind of like this. Just a little piece of history that's still in service. Then you've got uh, the oldest warship is the HMS Victory. Then I believe after that it is the USS Constitution. And the story behind the Constitution... The story behind the Constitution is actually a really, really cool one. If you don't know about the Constitution's history, as in the ship, not the actual, you know, document, uh, I highly recommend you look it up, because it, the captain of that ship and the people that sailed on her were absolute badasses. The ship deserves to be uh, in the Hall of Fame forever, as far as I'm concerned, because... What what that crew pulled off back then was just absolutely insane. They took on a ship that was like twice their size and they won without taking hardly any damage. And the reason for that is because um, the the people that built her used a type of tree, a type of oak tree that is only really native to North America in the southern part of the country. And what they did was they used the regular tree on the outside, like the outer hull of the ship, then they put the other tree like in the middle, then they used the, uh, the regular tree again as the inner hull. So the middle of the hull was that... Uh, American oak tree and it just it it couldn't be pierced like the cannonballs that hit the side of the ship did very minimal damage and that's how the Constitution won her battle it was just her designers just knew what the heck they were doing Right, well, I will see you guys whenever we reach uh, latitude 38 and we start to turn further east. <clears throat> well, nighttime has fallen on us once again. That looks like it might be latitude 38. And it goes any further down, it's going to be halfway, which means that would be 37. So I think it's time that we start turning east. Which works for me.
<clears throat> All right, so from here on in, this should be uh, our our course. Probably nothing but open ocean between us and Kronos at this point. I doubt there's any random islands or anything out here. Be nice if there were, but I doubt it. In any case, I will see you guys back in a moment. <clears throat> 